come in. Welcome. Welcome to Mystery Theater. I am Hyman Brown. These are very public times. Few of us can have completely private lives anymore, even when we think we are living one. In the days of infrared cameras, DNA, computers, to mention only a few, which of us knows who knows what about our most intimate secrets? Happily, only the men who fear these probes, who have something dreadful to hide, who have to spend every waking hour planning to protect the secrets of their lives. And even they can slip and fail to avoid the unseen watcher. Sam? Sam? Where are you, buddy? Uh, back over Columbia Shores, Rich. What are you doing there? Something funny just happened below. What do you mean, funny? Well, I'm too far away, and I just caught it by accident, but I think I just saw a murder. Our mystery drama, The Unseen Watcher, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mandel Kramer and Earl Hammond. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In any town of reasonable size today, the helicopter has become a common sight, so familiar that most of us go about our business unaware of its presence. In most large cities, where the rush of traffic clogs the roads, as suburbanites stream to work and back from it, there is a traffic helicopter. This is your eye in the sky, Sam Bendix, at three minutes after eight on a bright, sunny morning. All major roads into the downtown area are running heavy traffic this morning, but uh, so far most of them are moving. Uh, coming in from the Bay Area, it looks as if some trouble may have developed further out towards Tarleton. Now, I'm going to cut off now and make a pass out that way and see what kind of report I can bring you. Uh, back in five minutes with an update. Calling commuter desk. Uh, Rich, do you read me? Loud and clear, Sam. What can I do for you? I'm on my way out towards Charlton. Uh, looks like we got the beginning of a real foul-up. You fly boys get all the fun. Uh, you've got to be kidding. It's the same grind every day. Eh, go off, man. You're not cooped up. <laughs> How big is this cabin, huh? There's more room in a compact. Yeah, but you look to expanding horizon. Yeah, same old parkways, same old freeways, same old toll bridges. What about the fringe benefits? What fringe benefits? Where are you now? Uh, Columbia Shores, uh, just about to uh, head over the bay. Why? Why? Isn't that what I'm talking about? Is she out today, or is it too early? Who? You know who I mean, Suntan Sue. Oh, 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 her. No, no, no. A little early for her yet. Hey, is she really that stacked? <laughs> You'll never know till you come upstairs with me. Can you really see that good from that high? Hey, only uh, with my x-ray vision. But I mean, you're sure she doesn't have anything on? Who needs x-ray vision for that? Uh, hey, uh, hold on. I'm across the bay now, and, uh, oh, I see the trouble. And Man, it is not good. Uh, I'm uh, banking down to take a closer look. Hmm. Somebody jumped the guardrail coming out of the city. Oh, we really have a Donnybrook down there. Well, they won't clear this one in under an hour. Uh, look, can you sandwich me in on somewheres between the world falling apart and the elderly citizens' revolt? Give you airtime in ten seconds. Stand by. Okay, Sam, you got your moment of glory. Coming up on four, three, two, one. Old man eye in the sky, back with you again and laying this sad news on anyone using 85 or any of its feeder routes. A uh, multiple accident just your side of the Bay Bridge has stalled everything for at least an hour. Oh, thank the Lord for small favors. I had to check out how heavy the traffic is where I'm going. A little late to check that out, wouldn't you say, Morgan, dear? Look, don't try to be funny, Cheryl. There's nothing very funny about the spot we're in. Correction, Morgan. The spot you're in 
I had nothing to do with it. You're involved. Look, I got to take a ride out to Guernsey this morning and face Lou Roney. Now, I owe the man a hundred grand or more. Now, I have to pay it some way, cash or blood. Well, that's your choice. What do you mean, my choice? You know that I'm busted, that the only way out is to sell the house. Over my dead body. Cheryl, honey, I don't think you understand. If I don't ante up, these guys play for keeps. It could be over my dead body. That's your problem. I don't owe him anything. Look, the only asset I've got left is this house, and it's in both our names. Now, I can't sell it without your permission. That is so right. That's why I made you make it joint ownership. All I've got left out of our marriage, Morgan, is my interest in this house. And nobody's taken that away from me. It's only temporary, honey. I wouldn't like to think you consider me the same. That's too bad you were obviously such a small-time operator that you blew everything. You handle your debts and don't bother me with them anymore. Where are you going? Oh, to take a little sun up on the roof. One of the few pleasures left to me. Look, let me put up the house against the debt, will you, baby? The debt I could wipe out. Just need some room to operate, that's all, to breathe. Now, let me tell the guys out in Guernsey when I get to them that I've got something to back up what I blew. You go see them first and then let me know. You use the word. I'm not about to blow anything. All I care about is how I come out. And you better convince me it's very far ahead. You want to talk any further business? You'll find me on the roof in the raw. And the business had better be just as basic. Hey, woodchopper. You going to sleep up there? No, Rich. What do you want? Just a kind word. What are you seeing up there, Sam? Mm, not much. Just came back across the bay. Where are you heading now? Well, uh, I guess I'll just mosey on up to Queen Parkway and take a gander to see if that parked car is still blocking the lane. Uh, well, you know, except for the mess the other side of the bridge, everything else looks peachy dandy. Hey, you over Columbia Shores yet? Yep, right smack on top of it. Has Suntan Sue made her appearance yet? Uh, oh, hold everything. I'll take a look. Oh, yes, sir. Just came up on the roof. Large as life and twice as natural. You mean she's really in the buff? Unless it's a plastic bikini. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, she doesn't mind. She just waved at me. How do you like that? Well, at 800 feet, who can be sure, huh? I think you're putting me on, Tiger. Not me. I don't think this dame exists. Well, sure she does. You go ring the doorbell of the uh, fourth house from the corner of Avenue B on Gardner Avenue. I bet she opens the door. Oh, come on. How would you know her address? Ed, I've been flying the city for five years in the traffic beat. You name me a street I don't know. So that's your address, huh? Next thing you'll be telling me is you know her phone number. <laughs> oh, there's a limit to my encyclopedic knowledge. Anyways, forget it. She's married. Rom, you've gone low enough you can see her ring? Uh-uh. Her husband. He just came up on the roof. How do you know it's her husband? Elementary, my dear Watson. She didn't even reach for a towel. Oh, that's enough of this idle chatter. Now, come on, let's both concentrate on what we're paid to do. What is it, Morgan? I have to leave now to go see Lou Roney, Cheryl. So I'll leave. You know I don't like to be disturbed when I'm sunbathing. I know, I know, honey, but about the house... No! Nothing about the house. Nil. Zero. Now get off the roof and leave me alone. Cheryl, I've got to tell him something. How am I going to pay him what I owe him? Well, maybe if you have a nice little boy chat, he'll do you a favor as an old customer and wipe out the debt. A hundred thousand? Are you kidding? Oh, he's taken you for more than that in the past. I ought to know. I'm the one who's always had the pleasure of paying your gambling debts. Look, I spent plenty on you when I was riding high. Oh, sure, Morgan. All that lovely jewelry and furs. I enjoyed them. The brief time I had them, for we had to pawn them to pay last year's tab at your favorite horse parlor. Well, I still have the tickets. We'll get them back. Oh, yeah? How? Look, once I clear my credit through, Lou, I, I got a big hit coming. I feel it in my bones. Mm. And what would you use to bet with? Now, look. Look, Cheryl, I think... I figure we get... At least two fifty for the house, okay? Now the mortgage is only seventy-five, and say the agent's fee and the lawyers and taxes and everything eat up maybe twenty-five more. That leaves us with one five oh. Now look, I don't take any flyers. I play chalk, you know, just bet favorites, and in no time at all. That's honey. it. What? 
No time. No time at all. What are you talking about? That's what I have for you. No time. Or for any of your big ideas. Cheryl, honey, listen to me. Lou Roney doesn't call anyone on the carpet like this for nothing. If I can't satisfy him that I can raise the cash to pay him off, he could have me rubbed out. Now, honey, I, I promise I you... I don't want your promises. I just want you out of my life. How can you talk that way? Look, I've made mistakes, but you, you know how I love don't you. Don't touch me. I'll tell you a way out of your problems, Morgan. What? Why don't you go buy a bushel basket and take it around town to all the fancy women you've clothed and supported? Let them save your bacon this time. Take up a collection. Look, honey, I never cheated on you. One good thing in my life. The, the only one I ever loved. You're my whole life. I count on you. You let me down now. I, I, I don't know what Oh, I... save the act for whoever you're involved with now. If you want a shoulder to cry on, make it hers. The only shoulder you're getting from me is stone cold. Who is it? It's all right, Denise. It's only me, Morgan. Oh, you gave me a start. I woke up and heard the door. I, I thought someone broke in. What's the matter, sugar pie? What are you doing here so early in the morning? I gotta talk to you, honey. I don't have much time. Okay, well, here... Help me in with my robe first, okay? Yeah. Uh, you want some coffee? No. No, I need a drink. Well, you know where it is. I'll, I'll get some ice. Oh, forget it. I'll take it straight. Hey, what, what's got you so down? I had a call from Lou this morning. He wants to see me. The office? No. His place. Out in Guernsey? Mm. Well, that's not good. I know. I'm scared, Denise. Well, you don't have to be if you have the money. I don't. I mean, you can have it when you sell a house. Well, I can't sell the house. Well, why not? Because it's only half mine. The other half is in Cheryl's name, and I can't sell it unless she agrees. But she's got to agree. Doesn't she know the spot you're in? Yes, she knows. Oh, Lou Roney doesn't mess around. He plays for keeps. Well, she knows that, too, and it doesn't make any difference. She hates you that much? Look, she wouldn't lift a finger to save me. Denise, honey, you're the last hope I've got. You gotta help me, please. Me? Look, you can talk to him. You can ask him to give me a break. Oh, no, Morgan. I'm the last one who can get mixed up in this. No matter what I think about him, he's still my father. If he knew I'd been messing around with you, he'd he'd hand me my head. And you'd be deep sixed for sure. Oh, <laughs> no, sugar, that's no way. Well, what am I gonna do? Well, there's only one way out I can see. You'll have to get a torch. A torch? Yeah, a guy who sets fires, a, a pro. How would I go about getting someone like that? You've got the best contact in the world, Lou Roney. If it's anything against the law, he's got it, or can get it. You tell him it's the only way he'll ever get his dough out of you, and he'll find you somebody. Well, so, so suppose he does. I mean, what do I want him for? To burn your house to the ground. And if it was me... I'd burn up that wife you married with it. What do we really know about anyone? How much do we sense or understand of what drives and motivates them? Even our closest friends, we don't see them under a magnifying glass, but rather at the wrong end of a telescope, removed from us as a helicopter pilot might see them. Animated dolls. That's the rule. This is the exception, as you will begin to see when Mystery Theater returns for Act Two. By the time Morgan Denny crossed the Bay Bridge, heading in the direction of Charlton, they had already cleared one of the lanes jammed by the multiple accident on the inbound road. Outbound traffic was, of course, unimpeded, and he was able to approach the interview he dreaded faster than he would have wanted to. He was totally unconscious of the traffic helicopter overhead. Wrecking crews have already cleared one lane inbound to the city, and within the next five minutes uh, should have the second lane open. Uh, traffic, which had been bottled up, has already been able to spill out some, and there's relatively steady movement towards the city. 
Delay should run from 15 minutes to half an hour. Well, this is your eye in the sky, Sam Bendix, hoping you have a good day and... Real easy to be bubbly about disaster, isn't it? Sam Bendix, or whatever your name is. When you're not sitting in the middle of disaster. Why, wouldn't it be great if you could just fly that whirly bird down here and lift me off the hook? What's the matter with me? I'm flipping my lid, talking to nobody. Yeah. Who? Oh, yeah, Morgan Dunning. All right, I'll see him right away. Come. Well, hello, Morgan. Come on in. Hello, Lou. <laughs> Close the door behind you. Sure. I hope I'm not late. No, 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 no. I heard about the accident near the bridge. Yes, uh, no trouble on your side. No, I was just uh, a little slow down. I, so. I hope there won't be any trouble about your return. No, no, I think I think they got it all cleared up. Yeah. So, yeah? No, no, thanks. Drink? Yeah. <laughs> A little, little early in the day for that. Eh, we all have our habits, bad or good. I'll pass on the drink. Fine, fine, fine. Now, uh, suppose we get down to business, huh? Did you uh, bring me some money? Uh, Lou, I have to explain about that. Well, if you have to, you have to. It had better be good. I don't have the cash. Get it. No, I intend to. But I need a little help from you. I don't peddle help. Just odds and the opportunity to lay a bet on anything you want. Now, if my judgment is wrong, I pay off. If my better screws up, that's his problem. I know that, Lou. I know that. All I'm asking for is a break. That's all. Well, all you ask for every time you bet is the same thing. Sometimes the breaks don't go your way, and I let you get in a lot deeper than I usually do. It's a hundred grand. Now, I waited... I want to collect, as of now. I haven't got it. Answer one to question one. Now, next question. How do you get it, and how soon? Real soon, if you'll give me a hand. What does that mean? Now, look, I'm sitting on some prime property on Columbia Shores. It's worth a quarter of a million dollars. Less than 70000 mortgage. Now, that should be security enough for what I owe you. You say. But I'm not interested in real estate. Sell it. And pay me off. I can't. Why not? Because it's a joint property. It's in my wife's name and my name, and she don't want to sell. Well, then it looks like you're the real bind. Well, it would be, except that... I mean, uh, there is a way out of it if I can get your help. What? Well, we carry top dollar insurance. If that house should happen to just go on fire, you know, and burn down, if it should be a total loss, we'd realize at least a couple of hundred thousand, plus whatever we could sell the land for. Now, you split it two ways, and I have enough to pay you off. That's if the house burned up. Now, are you thinking of setting fire to it yourself? No. No, I, I wouldn't know how to. I mean, you know, to be sure that... Hmm. I thought, uh... I thought maybe you could tell me how. Yeah, if I could, it'd cost you. How much? Figure 10%, 25 thou. Well, I wouldn't have it and be able to pay you... Until, uh, you know, after we sold the land. Uh, I, uh, I don't think I'd want to ride with that. Lou, what do you want from me? There's no blood in a stone. That isn't my problem. Well, it isn't mine anymore, either. My hands are tied. Not quite. Your wife would have the dough. No way. You mean she won't put anything up for you? No. That's why she won't sell the house. Oh, she doesn't care about your health, huh? She'd just as soon see me dead. It's too bad. She could just get her wish. Lou, please. You're not serious. Nothing personal, Morgan. Just business. Of course, uh, you could be sitting pretty if you turn the tables on her. You got a week. Whatever you figure. If you need the torch, contact Dave Varga. You know where. You placed enough bets. I won't be seeing you again. What are you saying? Hmm? Either way, you and me don't have any business in the future. Ever. I don't like deadbeats. You'd better come through. What choice have you got, Morgan? You realize what he was telling me? Just as flat out as if he'd said the words? Oh, I don't need any pictures. He was as good as telling me to murder my wife. That's my father. He never loses a string on anything. One thing I have to say about him... He always knows the answers. His answers? That's the bottom line with him. Which means it has to be with me? Of course. 
You mean you agree with him about Cheryl? I told you the way out before you even went. You, you mean I have to kill her? Well, it would be better for her if she's going to burn up with the house. How can you talk about it like this? Well, how can we not talk about it if you value your neck? Look, I never killed anyone. She doesn't mind seeing you get rubbed out. Why should you hesitate to protect yourself? Denise, I, I, I wouldn't know how. I, I haven't got a gun. I haven't got any weapons. Oh, don't be a fool. It can't be anything that would show up later. And don't think the insurance company won't sift the ashes. Well, then how? Use your head. Strangle her, or smother her, or feed her a, an overdose of pills. Anything that can't be traced in the remains. You want me to do this, Denise? Well, it solves a lot of problems for us. But we've been all right as we as we are, haven't we? No, no, no. I want to tie you down. Why? Oh, don't ask me questions I can't answer. You're a sickness with me, Morgan. Maybe with most women. I need you. I, I don't want to be without you. If I should go through with this, you'd have me on a platter tied hand and foot. <laughs> you know something, baby? Better suit me just fine. Make sure you're never straight again. Well, you don't ask much. Only your life, lover. It isn't worth a plug nickel any other way. Abe? Oh, no, 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 th no this is Morgan Denning. Uh, give me Abe, will you? Yeah, hold on. Hello, Abe. It's Morgan Denning. Look, Abe, uh, I want to get a message to Lou. And uh, he said to go through you. Yeah, the message? Just that it's okay. I bought the deal. Now, how do I contact the guy and when is the big event? And tell him... Tell him that he doesn't have to worry, that I can make good all the way. What? Tonight? Well, I don't know if I... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. I'll get out of town on business. My wife? I'll make sure the insurance company can't blame her any more than me. Commuter's desk to copter. Sam, hey you up there. I got you, Rich. Where are you now? Uh, town end of the Bay Bridge. Any trouble? No, no, not yet. Evening traffic's building up, but everything's moving. Why? What do you got? Big Harry, our peerless producer, has a mobile unit out covering some Boy Scout rally in Pier Square. He'd like to get a fast color story of how it looks from the air. Could you hop, skip over there and catch it for him? Sure, okay by me if you kill my 6 o'clock report. Uh, but I'd uh, like to get back over here before dark. They're patching the road in from Tarleton where the accident tore it up this morning. Uh -huh. And some of the heavy equipment is blocking the flow out from town. <laughs> We're liable to have a big tie up here. Fine. This won't take you long, and you should make it. Okay, I'll wheel over there right now. Uh, just for me, before you leave, how's our girlfriend? Is she anywhere around? Oh, suntan Sue? Uh-huh. <laughs> A little late for sunbathing, but it, it, wait, wait a minute. Yep, yeah, she's there. Ah, but she don't stand a chance. She's got her husband with her. So what's a husband got that I haven't? Right at the moment, a pillow. He's bringing it to put under her head. Forget her, Rich. She's got all the loving she'll ever need. Cheryl? <laughs> you startled me. What are you doing up here on the roof? I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, look, you can't get any sun anymore. Get your robe and come downstairs. I don't want to. Cheryl, I have to talk to you. If it's about selling the house, no. That is out. It can't be. Now, I saw Lou Roney this afternoon, and he laid it on the line. I have got to find that cash. I told you my idea where you could get it. Now, look, I'm not fooling around, Cheryl. This is deadly serious. I'm giving you a last chance. Last chance for what? To bail me out. Oh, no, never again. You've exhausted your credit. Uh, Cheryl, I'm begging you to listen to me before... Before what? What are you doing with that pillow? I don't have any use for it. I hope I won't have. Now, one last time, Cheryl, are you going to help me sell the house and save my neck? How many times am I going to have to tell you no? Even if it costs me my life? I wish to heaven it would. And that you were out of mine. I never want to see you again. You're such a rotten nothing. Oh, you fixed it for me, so life isn't worth living. All right, if 
that's the way you feel, I'll fix it so you don't have to. I told you I don't want that pillow. Hey, Morgan, what are you... You're making me, Cheryl. I don't want to do this. There's no other way. It's the only way I can save my own neck. The only way I can be safe. Sam! Sam! Where are you, buddy? Come in! I, uh, I, I'm, I'm here, Rich. Where? Uh, back over Columbia Shores. Well, what the heck you doing there? Harry's waiting for that color story over at Pier Square. Well, I, uh, I had a swing back here, Rich. Uh, something funny going on. What do you mean, funny? You remember you asked me about Suntan Sue? Yeah. Uh, her husband was bringing her a pillow? Oh, forget that, babe. It's all just a gag. Yeah, well, not what I thought I just saw. No, I, I, I can't be sure. I'm too far away, and I just caught it by accident. But right at this moment, if you ask me to swear to it, I'd have to say, I think I just saw a murder. I said in the beginning, these are public times. It's hard to avoid some unseen watcher over our lives. But how much has Sam Bendix actually seen from the vantage point of his helicopter? Even he is not sure. Has murder been committed? And can he prevent Morgan Denny from getting away with it? Or is his accidental witnessing of an event, as far away as it is, too late? Mystery Theater shall return shortly with Act Three. After he lands his helicopter, even Sam Bendix thinks he is building something out of nothing. But after sleeping on it overnight, Sam has gone to the police anyway and made a statement. All the rest of the morning, he has felt some embarrassment about stirring up some kind of visual humor until in the afternoon, he is called back to see a Captain Fuchs. Why did you report this last night, Mr. Bendix? Well, I asked the news show to phone it into you, Captain, but I, I guess the powers decided that we didn't have enough evidence to go on. Yeah, according to this affidavit the precinct took from you this morning, there wasn't. Yes, I, I realize that. Yeah, thinking back on it all, I, I realize I was uh, taking a heck of a lot for granted. What did you see exactly? Suppose you tell me. Hmm? Well, this dame is a running gag. See, I always tell Rich and the boys in the new show below that she's in the... You know. But th that's just kidding around. What does she wear? Well, I don't know. Bikini? Two-piece? I'm too high up to see that much detail. But like I said, it's, it's just a gag. But you know... We keep it up just to relieve the monotony. And last night, she was on the roof? Check. What time? Oh, around six. And just exactly what did you see? Well, it was overcast, and I was just wheeling west to check a possible traffic tie-up, and I, I passed over the house. At what height? Oh, six, maybe 700 feet. And you saw her on the roof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how big would she be at that height? Oh, I'm not much bigger than half of your small finger. But, but like I said, so small you couldn't tell what she was wearing or wasn't. And you saw this man come up carrying a pillow? Yeah, yeah that's what it looked like. And then? Well, I'd started on course to my next checkpoint, and uh, something made me turn back. And, uh, I banked and went into descent because I... I well, I... Don't know why, really. Just a sort of instinct that something was wrong. Wrong like what? Well, I had the notion that instead of bringing the pillow up to put under her, he had it over her. Over her face. Smothering her? No, no, no. I, I couldn't actually see that. But as I zoomed down, I could see the guy pick her up and sling her over his shoulder and carry her off the roof. Were you close enough by then to recognize him? Oh, no, heck, heck, no, no. All I could see was the top of his head. Mm hmm And the woman, uh, was she fighting him or what? Well, I just couldn't tell that. She didn't seem to be. So you didn't really see very much, Mr. Bendix, did you? Oh, 
I guess not. What made you think it might have been a murder? Well, it was just a hunch. Oh, don't apologize for it. A cop like me lives on them. I think your hunch could have been right. Well, I wish the radio station could have phoned the police right away. It wouldn't have made any difference. There wasn't enough evidence for us to take any action. And by my book, it would have already been too late to stop a murder, that is. Now, the fire is something else again. Uh, the fire? I didn't give you my full title when we met. I'm Captain Tim Fuchs of the arson squad. Arson? That's right. Now, the house we're talking about belonged to a Morgan Denning and his wife, Cheryl. Last night, it went up like a torch and burned to the ground. You mean he set fire to it? Not Mr. Denning. We checked him out. He was in Atlanta on business last night. Well, what about his wife? Well, from what we gather from the bereaved husband, she was in the house at the time. The ashes are just getting cold enough for us to sift for her remains. <laughs> Why did I have to meet you here, Denise? Oh, relax, Morgan. You're a hot item. To your skirts are clean, anyone takes a risk being tied up with you. Me especially. You can't pin anything on me. I have an alibi. Yes, for the fire. Well, that wiped out the other. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Have you contacted Lou? He got to me. I'm okay now. With all the insurance going to me, I can pay off him and the torch and come out well ahead. Plain sailing for you and me, Denise, from now on. Well, first we lay low and let this blow over. You're not home free yet. Well, what's to stop it? There was nothing left of the house. Nobody can trace a thing. That's what has to be made sure of. Oh, it's going to kill me, Morgan, but you and I are split for the next six months. You walking out on me? Well, for six months, we better act like neither of us exists. Why? Well, for the police, that they shouldn't find a motive. For my father and the organization. Oh, heaven help us if they knew you and I have anything going. I'm going on a cruise. Now, you wait a minute. You can't run out on me. I'm not running out on you. I'll be back when the heat's off. I appreciate you bringing me up here, Sam. Oh, it's my pleasure, Captain Fuchs. Now, we're right over at Columbia Shores now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see down there the uh, empty spot between those two buildings? Ah. Uh, well, that's where the Denning house was. And this is the height you were flying? Yeah, right, right. Now, I'll give you an idea. You see the house to the right, uh, three away from where the Denning house was? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, good. Well, there's a guy working on the chimney there, huh? See? That little dot? That's all you could see? Well, I'm a little more used to looking from this angle than you are. But you still couldn't identify that guy face to face? No, no. Any more than you could swear that it was Morgan Denning you saw on the roof of the house two weeks ago before it burned down? Well, I gotta say no. Or that you could even testify that you actually saw a murder? Well, I couldn't swear to it, but... If I... you couldn't swear to it, what good is it in court? Nah, the only thing you know for certain is the date. October 24th. No. Yeah, come right down to it. That, that's right. Come right down to it. We're stymied, Sam. Now, you know, I know, that Morgan Denning murdered his wife and burned up his house and her for the insurance money to pay off his debts. But we're never in the world going to prove it. The son of a gun is going to get away with it. Even with a witness. Yeah, but that isn't fair. No, son, it sure as all get out isn't. The only consolation is that life has a way of catching up. Hmm. Well, how's it going to catch up with a heel like Denning? I don't know it will, but give it time. I'll give you odds one way or another. You'll get his comeuppance. This is your eye in the sky with the first report of a grim morning in late November. The driving rain is slowing up all the traffic with poor visibility, and uh, flooded roads are causing massive backups on all access routes into the city. And it ain't a fit night out for man, nor beast, nor helicopters, nor traffic. This has been a long winter, and if anyone thought we were through with the snow, forget it. 
as far as I can see over any major traffic. Well, I guess most of you thought winter would never end. But it has been a glorious day, and from all the signs, spring is here to stay. Now, all the roads are clear tonight, so let's all take a deep breath and say, Hallelujah, it's been a great day. Hello, Denise, baby. Welcome home. What are you doing here, Morgan? Well, I figured you would do back from the cruise. The timing's just great. What makes you think so? The insurance came through. Your father's paid off, so is the little man with the lucky match. We're free to start howling, kid. Oh, and that is one beautiful tan. Does that go all over? You'll never know. What's that mean? Well, I did a lot of thinking in the months while I was away. About the future. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing, honey. And as soon as it looks good, you and me, we're going to get married. Mm, no way, Morgan. Hmm? I've made up my mind. I'm not interested in you anymore, that way. Oh, come on, honey. Denise, give me a chance to make up to you for all I haven't been able to do yet. Oh, I'll give you the chance for that. Now you're talking. How much did you clear on the whole deal? Hmm? How much did you net after you paid off Lou and the torch? No, I don't know. Maybe uh, 75 grand? I'll settle for that. What are you talking about? I mean, it's a start, you know, but just give me a chance to run it up, and then you and I... Not you, Morgan. Me. The thrill is gone. I don't get you. I'll spell it out for you. We're through. What? Huh? Finished. You can't walk out on me. It's a new experience for you, Morgan. You always ditched the girls, didn't you? This time it's different. Mm-hmm. If that's the way you want it. Just the way I want it. Well, it's a free country. Not for you, Morgan. This one's going to cost you. Like, say, uh, the 75000 you just mentioned. I don't get you. <laughs> that's all right. You don't get me. And I take the cash. You think I'm going to hand the $75,000 over to you? I think you'd better, Morgan. Otherwise, I blow the whistle on you. Blow the whistle? Don't get too big for your boots, baby. What could you say to the cops without involving yourself? I wasn't thinking of the cops, stupid. All I have to do is to tell Lou about you and me, and you're long gone. Now... Do you want to hand over the dough? You rotten, two-timing little... Look, I haven't gone through all I have in the last six months to let you take it away from me. I'm calling you a bluff. Okay. Let's lay it right on the line. Who are you calling? Lou, just like I told you. Oh, uh, don't you threaten you me. You hurt my hand. Now, don't you ever touch me again. Well, I'll do better than that. I'll shut you up once and for Let's all. Get your hands off me. Uh, are you crazy? Your wife was one thing, but you can't think you can get away with murdering me. Shut up. Uh, uh, Shut up, do you uh, hear me? Uh, Don't you say it. Uh, uh, Don't you say that word. Let, 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 let me go. You crazy. Six months, I sweated it out. Nobody's going to take that away from me. Nobody. Please, uh, uh, please. Uh, uh. Denise? Denise? She's still breathing. What do I do now? What do I do now? Hey, you reading me, Rich? It's gotten to be a habit. Where are you? Over Queen Parkway. Nothing to report, really. All systems go. Did you say something about some ice slicks still hanging about? Eh, only a few spots after you swing out of the parkway off piers and head north out of town. Ah, uh, how's traffic in general? It's heavy, but moving. You know, this is the kind I always worry if someone does foul up. The stream is running so hard you got a real pile up before the cars behind have any chance to stop. I, uh, I think I'll drop down and have a closer look at road conditions. I'll get back to you. Where am I? You'd be better off if you never woke up, Denise. My hands. It's tied. My feet. Stay asleep, Denise. Sleep. It won't hurt as much. What are you doing? 
this is where you get off. No! No! I didn't ask for it, Denise. You did. Holy cho... What is it? Some... Some guy... Some guy shoved someone out of a car. Oh, no! Hey, Sam, what's going on? You heard me. I saw this guy shove her out. I, I think it was a woman. Then he cut off the Queen Park exit, gone like a bat out of hell. Well, what happened to the woman? I, I'm not sure it was a woman, but whoever it was, the cars are panic-stopping now. Fifteen, maybe twenty of them have just have just gone over her before they could stop. Oh, what? All hell is broken loose down there. I'll get you an air spot so you can report. No, no, never mind that. I'm taking off after that guy. Oh, that was no accident. It was deliberate. I'm going to stay on his tail till you get the police to intercept him. Uh, he's headed north on Queen Parkway, and I am right on top of him. <laughs> I'll keep in touch. You raised the cop bridge? They're on their way, Sam. They'll set up a roadblock around Stamet and beyond. Now, where are you? I'm, I'm right over his tail. Uh, hey, he's seen me now. He's trying to run away from me. Now, he hasn't got a prayer. Oh, brother, I'd like to sit down on him and squash him like a bug, whoever he is. All right, take it easy, take it easy. Maybe what happened was just an accident. Just stay with him. Yeah, 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 don't worry. I wouldn't let this guy get away for... Uh-oh. What is it? Well, he's hit an ice patch. How? Oh, wow, he is out of control. His car is spinning around like... like... Oh, man, he's heading straight for the underpass wall. Oh, he has bought it. So just because sometimes life pays off even, I figured I'd buy you a beer, Mr. Bendix. Well, I, I appreciate it, Captain Fuchs, but it was nothing special. Now, I thought perhaps maybe you'd think it was. You know who the guy was you trailed in your copter before he crashed? No. It happened to be a guy named Morgan Denning. The, the guy who beat that murder rap last summer? Yep. Didn't do him much good, did it? Less than six months later, he totaled himself. It's like I tried to say to you. Give it time. These guys always cop it in the end. I'll be back shortly with a final thought. I always wonder when I think of this story, what went through the mind of that frantic man, Morgan Denny, after he rolled the body onto the highway. He found that his crime had been witnessed by a silent watcher from the sky. No wonder he lost his head and in panic also lost his life. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Evie Juster, Earl Hammond, and Sam Gray. Associate Director, Marlon Swing. This is Hyman Brown, producer-director, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, then, pleasant dreams.